What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today we have another podcast with myself, Justin and Josh. Yeah, he's got some fight, let him go a bit. otherwise known as the Minnow Hunters. Today we have another exciting one for you. We got some pretty exciting topics to talk about. Before we get into it, uh, we feel pretty good about the last podcast, all about the Bow River, don't we? Yeah, I think so. We'll see what everyone has to say, I suppose. Solid yes, 7 out of 10 at least. Yeah. What do you mean? It's already been out. People have f***ing loved it. Oh, yeah, this is the follow-up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're wearing the same clothes. <laughs> We wouldn't possibly batch film two podcasts at once. I don't think so. I don't think no. that would be very professional if we did that. Anyways, we're also product testing. It might be hard to see, but we got some Minnow Hunter enamel mugs. So you guys can put your apple juice in. Or we also have some other clothes being sent in. But I wanted to product test before I sent it out or made it available to you guys. So doing your due diligence. That's exactly it. I'm doing my due diligence Thanks, before I give you guys a product that I'm not proud about. So, so let's talk day. about each of our stories on how we got into fly fishing. And so if I'm not a part of either of your stories, you're basically not welcome back on the podcast. <laughs> 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 but no, we can start with, you know what? I'll start. <laughs> <laughs> So how I good got luck, in, brother. <laughs> good luck. How I got into fly fishing is hilarious. And the whole reason why I'm doing YouTube right now was because, well, as we know, Justin's my younger brother. Our family was in like, has always been into fishing. We've done a lot of fishing in our lives, not necessarily fly fishing. I mean, I think one of our uncles from BC might have. Uh, been into fly fishing but no one really taught us how to fly fish so after trying to catch fish just spin casting I can't even remember exactly the first time I figured out what fly fishing was it was probably maybe one of our uncles who got us into the sport and so then or who basically got us curious about the sport but they live a province over and we never see them so I basically turned to YouTube because my dad didn't know how to fly fish so I basically was consumed. I think the first thanks, dad. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks dad <laughs> for not up. being able to teach us to fly fish. But I think I ran into Orvis probably as each of us would have. And I think I ran into the Orvis like fly fishing school and you can, you can still go on online today and they have like everything, learn everything for free. So I consumed all of it, tried to go out to the Bow River, got skunked. It was absolutely <laughs> terrible. Said, I'm never fly fishing again, right? Go on Instagram, watch some more YouTube on fly fishing, be like, oh, it's not that hard. Like, same sort of thing. Try to learn more back and forth. Next thing you know, I'm like, literally probably watched <laughs> a thousand hours of YouTube on everything from how to tie your own, like, line, how to rig your rod, where to find fish in the river, where to look even on maps to find rivers, like literally everything. <laughs> so I would go out. The Bow River wasn't it do, wasn't doing it for me, but basically after scouring forums and forums, I would find like a small cutthroat creek, I think, and like not to name names, but Livingstone was one of the cutthroat <laughs> creeks that I basically found and was like, we got to go try it. So it went out there, of course, right? Being new at fly fishing, absolutely owned. Like you could catch 20 plus fish on the dry in one day. And I was sold, like absolutely sold. So it was literally from watching YouTube because no one taught me. I tried to go into some of the fly shops, but I literally felt quite intimidated because <laughs> like I didn't know anything. Like I would feel like an idiot for asking stupid questions, right? But instead I'd watch YouTube go out, get skunked, go back, say I'm never <laughs> doing it again, watch people catch fish, be like, I got to learn more, try to do that. And the whole cycle happened until it just like basically it happened for me where I had a 20 plus fish day, dry fly mm -hmm. fishing, saw them cat, like saw them rise, jump out of the water for my fly. Right. And was just absolutely sold. Like that's when I knew like 
this is it for sure. Like yeah. spin cast fishing is so stupid compared to this. Like I'm fully on board. So after that, I was like, if that's how I learned how to fly fish from people putting out just content that just wanted more people to learn, I want to also give back. So a lot of people struggle with the Bow River. And so even in my local community, I thought it would be a perfect opportunity for me to give back and give instruction on how to catch more fish on the Bow River. So like it's come literally complete full circle that I learned to fly fish from YouTube Dang and now that, I'm yeah. making YouTube videos yeah. on how to fly fish. So Dude, pretty wild story. That's the circle of life yeah. right there. Dude, yeah. <laughs> but if you think you could top that story on how you got into fly fishing, I don't I, think I can. yeah, I don't know. Like, you could go next. Maybe I, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have gone first. I'll top yours next <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But that's a pretty sick intro to fly fishing, right? Like, oh, yeah, I didn't yeah. have a mentor. Mm. Like, no one got me into it. It was just like a, it's a learn it's a, as you go, got hooked, and was just like – just like any sport, the better you get, the more you love it, right? You put in a, you, you put in a lot of hard work, man. Like to get to it with the fishing me. knowledge you have, just learning everything and like going out and trying and coming back and learning everything and to getting to where you are now. Like that's a that's a lot of hard work. And, and I would say that there wasn't one guided trip either. I didn't take yeah. one guided trip. I didn't pay for one guided trip at all because just like what you're watching right now, everything literally every piece of information you could want is free yeah, out there yeah. already so like the bow river like it's not my river it's not a guide's river like you know how many times you know how many years people have been fishing that river like it's out there like yeah. you just yeah. have to do it so but i i can see why the guides i guess and the people who've been fishing that river get pissed off so easily <laughs> at you and give you a hard time for sure because like they didn't really have the access to any of that information yeah like the information they had was either someone they knew that had passed it on to them or it was that they went out and just kept going over and over and over and over again and then they finally figured it out from those years and years of fly fishing without that readily available information to them so it's like i just i can see why they give you a hard time because they didn't have that and they had to work for it yeah. for sure but like i mean at this this day and age 2021 so you're, have you seen google maps like it's yeah. like you're there yeah like they you know how you can drop yourself in like specific streets we're not there yet for the river but like i swear to god we're gonna be there for the river sooner or later well like no. there's yeah somewhat apps for that where it shows like main intersections in the river but yeah one day if someone just flies a oh, freaking it's, drone it's, the whole way yeah down, exactly google, you have google's 3D. just gonna fly a drone take a bunch of pictures yeah. down the river nice day see where the holes are yeah. you can probably even see fish on some of the smaller rivers yeah, exactly. yeah no kidding That's so the goal with that being said that was that was how i got into fly fishing it came from a digital aspect and i'm trying to give back in the digital way and there's never been a better time to try to learn to fly fish, especially for free. Not having, you don't have to have a ton of money. You don't have to spend a lot to get a lot. You can learn everything on YouTube. Like, man, I just put it actually for you guys that are listening. I have a free course on Skillshare. Might as well plug. Shout out Skillshare. Yeah, shout out Skillshare. If you want to learn how to fly fish, I have a fly fishing Skillshare. So I'll leave that in the description. Look it up. No, seriously. It like you can take the class for free in less than like three hours, I think, and learn every everything I've put out on how to fly fish. And if I'll be catching hogs in no time. No, yeah. If I could learn if I could go back and learn how to fly fish in three <laughs> hours. <laughs> man, I, I would have been catching fish a lot it's sooner. It, it's probably like some of the most important information I know. Justin or Josh, let's hear how you guys got into fly fishing. <laughs> well, I think Justin was going next because I don't think I can top your story. So That's fair. I'll just top Justin's. <laughs> yeah, no, like Torn, <laughs> like Torn, I started, I started fishing mostly spin cast for the longest time, um, mostly in the shoe shop behind like a little canoe or whatever, and it was always fun. I just liked the adventure of it, but with our uncle in the shoe shop, we'd have his fly rod a lot of times, and I felt it was always interesting just to try to cast it and that motion and that skill it was always um pretty cool to me so i really enjoyed that but the first time i actually got addicted to it i'd say like we went on a little fishing trip with the boys brought a couple beers um 
and I think we headed out to Sheep River, did about a half an hour walk in um, to this down like a absolute waterfall to this absolutely amazing few holes and stretches. And there's one part where it was a total little snake in the river where nice little S and uh, it was super high up, like a nice little river bank where it was probably like 15 feet above the river. But it had this beautiful stretch where it was only four or five uh, feet deep in the actual river. So you can stand on top of this little river bank and see down perfectly. So we're walking and hiking through this little kind of terrain area. And then we get up nice and high and then you can see perfectly where these few fish are. So there's about two hidden behind these nice like little boulders tucked away. So I rip a streamer and I have no idea what I'm doing, just absolutely splashing it in the river, but finally get it where I get a nice little drag in there, kind of getting it right in front of that little boulder. And I finally see him move. And once you see that dark little thing kind of jump out at your hook, you just instantly like your heart starts racing, like, holy shit, I could actually catch a fish right now. So then that cast in go, did a couple more, did a couple more, and then finally got him to fully chase it and then bite. And I was probably like, 30 feet away like 10 feet up above this whole time so my buddy i just scream out in joy buddy spencer comes running down just absolutely sprints throws his rod yeah, goes nice. to net it and it's a beautiful little bull trail and after that my first fish ever like not the rod, biggest but like because no. it happened in front of your eyes yeah and like you could see the whole take you could see him fighting it down the stream and like just running and chasing and like once you feel the tug of a fish on the end of a rod there's like nothing better because like Compared to a spin cast, though. yeah, absolutely, like fly over yeah, spin, yeah, yeah. just a little <clears throat> Even. jiggle that a fish gives. It's oh, something else. So that's when I became addicted to fly fishing. Yeah, but then Torin taught you everything you wanted to know about it. <laughs> I googled it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't Google it. Maybe you did Google it, but the only yeah, time no, you Torin went was out, very helpful in time. My flies, we went because yeah. I was too lazy to. A lot yeah, of the do time. you know not your flies, but you know how many times we went out together and you didn't know how to tie your knots <laughs> yeah so you would like literally lose your rig and i had to re-rig for everyone i went with at one point maybe you re-rigged for me a yeah times yeah i, I think i think there was sure. one time where it was like i probably went out with you uh josh right. and japes oh, yeah, and all man. three of you guys i was trying to get you guys into fly fishing and <clears throat> none of them knew how to rig but they all loved fly fishing, so like any time I wasn't even fishing, I was just re rigging all of their rods. But luckily, like there is only maybe like four or five knots you really have to know. There's maybe three, three knots you really have to know just to be out on the water, right? Like if your shit's rigged, you only have to know like maybe three knots, like how to tie tippets together, how yeah. to tie the fly on, two different ways right depending on the fly yeah. yeah but like more or less so like there was a time where i was tying all of your guys's rigs because oh, yeah. you would lose it right but now luckily we thank you for it yeah, yeah. no that's perfect because now those... we have a whole podcast together and you guys <laughs> yeah. catch as much many fish if not more than me it's Most like a times. little but it's one of those things where like if you act bad enough at something someone's just gonna do it for you so a lot of the times like if you're just like <laughs> frustrated tangled your whole rig Torn, I don't know how to tie this knot. And then you'd come over and do it for us. So shout out to Torn. Yeah, no, that's true. Because it would be like, watch you guys struggle with it yeah. for like I'm done. I'm just 30 drink. minutes and hate fly fishing. I'm or just come that. in, snip it, and redo yeah. it all in four seconds. Yeah. But. I'm going to do that next time we're out, I think. <laughs> yeah, no, not uh, anymore. Just, I forget. No, I re like, yeah, the first few times we went out, I... I remember I was just like, man, I don't like, what kind of knot is that again? <laughs> Dude, too many knots. Yeah. It feels overwhelming, but well, like. But there's uh, only two knots. Even there's only a few, right? Like you go out and someone's like, yeah, this is like 4X tippet. And then like, or what kind of leader do you have? And then what kind of fly is this? And like learning all the different yeah. types of all, like everything. It's, it's very overwhelming. But I it's, feel like fly fishing is a, is definitely a sport where it's like people prey on like other people not knowing like feeling like there's like you know how many fish i caught with like a walmart rod and like two knots you know what i mean like yeah. it doesn't have to be complicated to catch no, fish right like all, no. the skill is more what you're after rather than all the expensive gear and all the crazy knots and all the crazy rigs and all that shit that people try to get messed up with right yeah. and it's like oh how do i rig this up like 
Like I get so many questions with, from minnow hunters in their Instagram, just like people wondering how to fish the Bow River. Be like, how should I rig? Like, how deep should I rig this? And it's like, it completely matters on where you're fishing, yeah. not like how like deep from the indicator, Water right? It's like exactly. you just got to be off the bottom. So it's like wherever people are getting their information, whether it be wrong or from fly shops or from online or whatever, it's just like trying to help. Yeah. And it helps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. But like, have you guys seen that movie, A River Runs Through It? I yeah. Think it's called? <laughs> yeah. It's one of the most informative movies you'll ever see. <laughs> so learn how to fly fish. Dude, you're telling me. Yeah. Brad Pitt literally and just flying down the river wade or deep <laughs> yeah. while he's running on the bottom yeah fighting a fish the whole time <laughs> dude like if you have wanna... you ever been there where like in that, that scene. moment or yeah. in the, on that river oh no yeah. on that scene in yeah. that scene Most like time... i've literally been chasing a fish yeah. down like literally yeah. like falling chasing yeah. him still down be like going through hell and back to land it but like this guy's on like whitewater rapids like yeah. literally like yeah, <laughs> yeah. dipping in the water yeah, he's like, like bobbing rod above so like, but of course he had like yeah, a barb he fucking landed it because there's barbs we've all probably. gone for yeah. a swim at once yeah. at one point yeah we've definitely all gone for a swim you guys gotta wait till the episode where japes talks about his steve story oh yeah the where Bull they River. started crying that's why i wish he was here because <laughs> i wrote it down they almost started crying when they crossed they didn't back. actually cry they're men <laughs> no, they did they cry. Almost did. No, they 100% cried. James will tell you 100%. Cried. But no, have you ever had any like close calls? Like I've fall I've fallen many times crossing yeah. oh. rivers. Like I've dunked myself in the summer many times. It's been easy to just like get out and like dump the waders of water, right? Try to dry off in the sun, but like obviously in the winter, it's absolutely nightmare. So of course, we never recommend going out winter fishing with shitty waders or even waders that have holes in them because, like, it's not worth it. Like, you would lose toes, like, so fingers. It's 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 just not it's not fun. But with that being said, like, I honestly walk on a lot of ice and a lot, and I do a lot of dangerous walking. But like, I've only ever come out of it with like shin bruises. I've been quite lucky, but like, I'm a light guy. Like I also (laughs) know, like, I feel like I'm pretty smart. Yeah. I'm pretty nimble, pretty smart about where I think I could go. Like I always let my dog go first and like, (laughs) but like, I haven't had any like serious, like issues where I felt scared whatsoever. Have you guys? Not, not in the winter. I I don't think I would have. But like, even in the summer, like falling in the water, like coming down or hurting yourself. I would, yeah. Just like so focused in on getting the right cast, but like the water level is not working to your favor. Like you can't get to that spot because of access, whatever. And like, you're just, I was just so determined to like, you can see this fish that you want to catch, but just try and cross and right. I like wrecked phones for sure. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? Swim. Oh yeah. On the highway. Yeah. That's yeah. funny. Wrecked phones. I haven't even done that on the highway. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the, well, like was... obviously the sketchiest is during high water. Yeah. And during like Flood the season. and like you like, mentioned, yeah, flooding and it was shitty waders. Is yeah. what it was. Like that was back when I was like starting to fish and like right. just had shitty waders and I had shitty boots. Yeah, and I didn't have the proper soles. Yeah, and I went for a swim, and, and I also got fixated on like yeah, just trying to catch something that clearly was not. Isn't it funny that river fishing is like, like. Obviously, your rod would be number one importance in terms of the tool, but like the second importance would be like your waders. Like literally, like my waders are like the second most useful thing when it comes to trying to fish on the Bow River, because it's like completely across all seasons. Like keeps yeah. me dry, like keeps me like warm, keeps yeah. me like sheltered against scratches and like good well, like compared good waders, to the though. full rod they're almost as expensive as a rod because of how ex- yeah they're just crazy oh, but yeah, you could start they're out, so expensive but, but you can get like yeah. the walmart special yeah. right or yeah. like the bass pro special a lot of people i know that fly fish started with the either like the canadian tire special yeah. the walmart yeah. special just like those shitty nylon green waders and <laughs> yeah boots. yeah and that's literally all yeah. you need to get started and it helps you so much because then you don't mind wading into like waist deep water where then you can reach that spot to catch that huge fish, right? But like the first time, a couple times we went, I think it was like plus 30. So we just like literally did swim trunk freaking wading, which is like, that's so not nice fun. Yeah. It's not bad. 
But like if it's but 30, that's if though. you're like a fair weather fly fisherman, right? Like that's what if you're just yeah. fishing when yeah. it's plus thirty. Yeah. Or like with that, you like start chafing, and it's like oh wow. Well, like you walk far enough. I'm saying you got to chafe, like even just like the inside of your thighs. Just wet bathing suits walking that far on a fucking river, it's gonna start rubbing and shit. It's not fun. No, I've been fine, man. But yeah. so that's why I, I just feel like keeping dry is just so got much the better than wet work. for sure. <laughs> Hiking like 2k down to yeah, a hole fucking in don't neoprenes in like 35 chafing. degrees. We need to circle back to because Josh never told us how he got into fly fishing. Because he heard her first two stories. Yeah, we went. And like, yeah, yeah, and then I, I, bailed, like, I bailed. I caught a white fish and I was just jacked yeah, after that. I, so we went like, on a down. complete rant, but he never told us how he got into it. It's okay, man. Any story is a good story. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. that's definitely, they're definitely not as exciting as yours. But that's fine. It, just like everyone has their own oh, way of getting start. into it. And like I think most people it is spin casting, like just oh, yeah. chucking spoons and. Well, like for you guys, when you're younger, do you not think it was like for me? It was like there's like a body of water here, and there's stuff under it that we can't see or can't even think yeah. about. But it there's like there. something under there. But if I toss this little thing, it might pull up something yeah. that's living under there. For me, it was like such a cool, f- adventurous thing. Well, it was more about like. And partially why we named it Minnow Hunters. Because it was more about, like, hunting the fish than just trying to, like, like a spoon just hits, makes water vibrate differently and, like, makes just more of an aggressive reaction out of fish, right? Where it's, like, fly fishing, you're literally hunting them. You're going after, like, their feeding habits. There's a science for sure behind it. So it's, like, it's, like, take hunting and just translated into fishing and so I, sorry we're fucking interrupting josh justin so how i got into fly fishing yeah so yeah i mean everyone i think starts with spin casting um yeah and then you either know someone who fly fishes or you see videos on youtube or wherever it's it is. just like the next level yeah and it just look it just looks so much better than like chucking something out really like <laughs> i mean it, yeah technically it's kind of similar concept but um but fly was just, yeah, as soon as you see that next level, I guess, it was just, like, it's game on. Like, I want to get into it. But it comes with its frustrations. I remember being on the river, like, the first time I got a fly rod went down uh, to the creek. And just, like, I can see fish rising, and I'm, like, tying Sick. all this shit that the guys at the store Where was this? were, were going to use the Pritis Creek. And Sick. Like tying all the shit that the guys at the store were like, oh, yeah, yeah like, you yeah. should use this and this. And, like, nothing's working. Nothing's working. And then, like, just tie, like, keep changing out the fly, like, constantly. Didn't know what, really what I was doing. My yeah. knots, like, were garbage. <laughs> and, like, my back cast, I'd catch onto a bush or something, and, like, get so frustrated. Want to snap my like, yeah. And you just keep going and going and, like, take that breath and forget about the frustrations and what you're actually, like, out and where you are. And once you get into a fish, it's just like, all right. Yeah. Like, all that was worth Dude. it. It was just forget about all the stress yeah when you're tossing a spoon out right like the rod's a lot stiffer you're pulling it in then you feel the jerk and that's when that's when you get the tug right and you pull it in and you reel it in and technically you have really strong line so you're not worried about it breaking off and you can just basically haul the fish in right because it's like vibrating the water it's not necessarily eating it's just going after like a territorial like um action right so That being said, like when you fly fish to take it on where the rod is basically used to throw the line, not the hook, right? Because the hook is like imitating an actual food source. Mm -hmm. So that's what blew my mind, right? So it's like, like if a fish in a small river was to see you or was to get scared, it would go to the deepest spot and it would not eat, right? So it's like, yeah, maybe you could toss a spoon in and it would feel aggressive enough because the water movement and it would like, it would go after it, right? But it's, like, in terms of, like, actually hunting it to try to get it to eat, like, in its natural habitat, it's, like, you'll never walk upon a deer and then they'll see you and be, like, oh, that's chill. There's a hunter. I'm just going to keep eating, right? Like, that'll never happen. It's just, like, the same as fish, right? Like, you have to come up on this fish that has never seen your line or anything or spooked at all. It just thinks, here's my day. I'm swimming, looking for food, right? And then... If you toss it perfectly enough that the leader, not even the line, like if the line lands on top of it, it'll spook it. Yeah. So just the leader, and I'm talking dry fly fishing here, and we can talk about any kind of other fishing, but 
toss the 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 line out and the leader just tosses this tiny little dry that looks like some sort of ant or bug right and this is where it's like fishing those ants on some of those mountain streams are unreal but you toss the ant out there and it's just like a tiny little ant it's so hard to see but these fish see the ant and just rocket themselves out next thing you know you're into them you're into it you just saw the whole thing happen you pull it into its lip and then you have it on like this like it feels like a piece of bamboo right like even the small little rods like we're not talking we're talking like four weights and under it feels like that which is absolutely nuts so like that's that's the hook like that's the sensation the difference between spin casting is like you're just trying to find sorting out you're just sourcing out fish where fly fishing you're literally hunting them i think yeah it is so much more challenging it's Dude. so much more challenging right no so to sorry to get slightly off <laughs> topic there oh we're recording yeah we're yeah we're still recording i mean this is actually going to be quite an exciting podcast we have a lot to talk about <laughs> especially with the minnow hunters yeah we're jumping all over we have a, <laughs> a lot to talk about which is very exciting but let's jump back to josh's start into fly fishing and now oh. you okay you yeah. sat on your nuts <laughs> <laughs> so before we wrap this up we just need to basically preface how um josh and i met now to give you some background i took my business degree the start of my business degree in the University of Lethbridge and actually in one of my first accounting classes I met Luke Berry. Now Luke Berry is Josh's older brother so this is how we very f first met each other. Luke told me his younger brother was into fly fishing we should go together. Yeah and next thing you know Josh had started his journey in fly fishing yeah. and this was like at a similar time where Luke was like yeah you got to go out fishing with my brother. Yeah, it was it was a very very similar time when I started getting into fly fishing when I met you cause at my brother's party. No, yeah, um, I remember one of the first like one of the first pictures I have of you fly fishing is when we went to that place where we had to f hike five oh, k yeah, trail five yeah, k oh. across oh, the, yeah, the private. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 to the corner on the yeah uh, on the bow. Yeah. Oh. And yeah. Uh, like even bike. before we got to that corner right when we got down josh caught a sick bow yeah uh yeah like right away and it, it was like awesome and i remember that was like one of the first days we remember, actually went fishing together on the bow river on the and then bow, we went yeah. to that corner and i caught a bunch and yeah. he was like fuck <laughs> yeah, on catches the, on a lot the bow, of fish. i didn't really like get into many fish on the bow until we went out that one day no. uh, but we went like we before that i remember going out with you and you just like catching that hog rainbow uh, sorry, that hog bull trout on the sheep, and I like. Oh yeah, we did go was, to the that sheep was on, like, together. That was on like a size eighteen, like, yeah. pheasant tail, or I think it was a pheasant tail. Oh, or, one of the biggest, yeah, yeah it's, bull it's trout. I oh, picture, you were man. that's it's right. I, I remember that I picture, that. and that was on like a that's size right. eighteen. It was like a pheasant tail. That is tail, my man, YouTube picture, and uh, it was. Yeah, it was. Uh, rabbit hair pheasant tail yeah anyway it was, no yeah i, I think I, it was, I couldn't uh, believe it i was like how the fuck copper this john this guy catch oh, yeah. a bull trout that big on a like on a fly copper that john, size yeah because yeah. we were on the sheep yeah i knew yeah. where i knew exactly where but that bastard after that was. bull trout you basically like like yeah you can fish it and like i didn't really know what i was doing like i was just getting into it and I, we were nymphing and just going along and I missed a take and you're like, yeah, that was a take. Cause my indicator sank and my indicator sank. Sorry. And like, I didn't, <laughs> was, like, I, I didn't yeah. know. And then like the next row, you're like, cast it right into the falls, like right into the white water. Oh, this is all coming and, back to me and, and I got I, you on it. Yeah, yeah. And I cast it right into where you said, and I let go and it dropped and I was into a fish and, and oh. like, it I do I think remember it was that. Just, that was sick. Yeah. yeah. Who what was, who's your buddy we were with? Like, uh, who were we with? Who is that guy we were with? We were with one of your buddies. Yeah, maybe Preston. I don't know. Maybe Justin. I can't remember who yeah, we were I with. I can't now. remember who we were with. I could. I, That's hilarious. I, that I completely forgot about that, but that was right because yeah. you. Yeah, one of the biggest bull trout I got out of the sheep was yeah, that day awesome. and out of that fall, and it was like not on a streamer. Yeah. It was literally on a f it was copper a tiny, john or something. It was a what? tiny, tiny nymph. 
on the shoot. Oh yeah, you would like oh, to know. Yeah. Would like to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Viewers would like to know where you're on <laughs> yeah. the sheep too. But. No, it was um outside Turner Valley, like the one that oh, was like yeah. way out there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the thing about the sheep, man. We haven't fished in a couple of years. I think like we gotta head back there. Like yeah. it the has bull some trout, monsters yeah. that like come out of nowhere that you're like, oh, this is pretty shallow right now. I find the fish on the sheep are like so few and far oh, between. Man. But then that, once yeah. you do get into a fish on the sheep, like I've got it's some really nice rainbows yeah. on. That's the such sheep. a good feeling. I've done yeah. that to a few people like yeah. you before too. Be like, oh no, yeah, like stand here, cast yeah. there, and then they get the fish and they're like. How did you know that? It's uh, so rewarding on yeah. both parties oh, because dude, like so you've instructed good. someone on like yeah. how to get into a fish. And I yeah. like, it's also the respect level of like, yeah, this, like yeah. this guy could they fish all exactly, he wants. Like yeah. he knows how to fish. He yeah. could just like go downstream so telling and me. leave me be. That's like a guide too. Right. So like, yeah, yeah you exactly. totally respect so like guides. A, yeah, for sure. absolutely. Like it was a, it was a, yeah. like it was a personal guide basically. And, and like in the last part, I've I've never paid for a guide. Like I've just yeah. known people who've yeah. been fly fishing, and I now work with a guy who takes me on the boat. And like I'm just luckily have that connection. I'm privileged to have that connection to yeah. be able to fly fish as much as I, as much as I do. And with the people that we know that know how to fly fish and get yeah. into those kinds of fish. Well, I mean, we're like fucking YouTube it. We're 40 yeah. minutes in, and if you guys are still listening, this is an open invitation for you guys to reach out to us and go fishing with us. Like, how many people oh, have yeah. reached out to me on Minnow Hunters, and whether it be a 14-year-old kid who loves us or, like, yeah. some guy who has a boat that's like, oh, I got a sick spot on the bow. I want to mm-hmm. take you, right? Let's like, men, like, collaborate for sure. Justin, Japes, and I, my last video, you saw part of that last giveaway yeah some guy hit me up and was like yeah that's awesome yo i got access to this spot like i got it like yeah. dude that's what this is about like hit us up like let's go fishing together right like that's what fishing's mm-hmm. about is to have fun and do it together oh, so a, it's a lot of the connection like so much of the connection from fly fishing dude right. exactly so meet, so, meet so many people yeah. yeah yeah all right so that probably wraps up this episode there's a ton of value i mean we got into awesome little value bombs it's been exciting hopefully next time we'll have japes around but until next time guys make sure you subscribe to the channel you can uh hear this podcast i'm gonna make sure it's available basically on like google spotify um apple as well so you'll be able to hear that there but uh yeah if you have any ideas for us on what else we should discuss any topics you wanted to hear about on the podcast, let us know. Also, some fresh tips. There's some nice weather coming here to Calgary. So, like, if uh, the bow starts to unthaw a little bit, maybe head out there and see if you got any luck coming. Yeah, let us know. Be careful of those ice shelves, though. Oh, yeah, for sure. Very dangerous. I'm very light. If you have a dog, let them go first. Hammer some holes, <laughs> drill it. Whatever you <laughs> no. Throw some rocks. Just be careful out there. I appreciate you guys watching, but uh, until next time tight lines.